<laughs> when I see Slash on the map, I just have a tendency of just being like, bro, it's Slash, just chow him. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, damn. Mm. But um, nah, Austin's my boy, but definitely him. I just, I don't know, for some reason, I just have like a delusional ego against him. Because I feel like the way he plays, it's like he hates when subs run up close to him and just get like those close range gunfights with him. So I think he hates like having that situation happen. So, and I tend to make, try to make that happen to him as much as I can. What about Clay? Do you feel the same? Mm. All right, welcome back to the Codcast Friendly Fire. Today we got AG. Welcome. How you doing, brother? Good boys. How you guys going, man? How you guys going? Doing good, man. Jay, how you feeling? You know, I'm feeling great. LeBron is getting ready to play here pretty <laughs> soon, so it's a good day. You know, I had a great, fantastic weekend with my family, with my daughter. So it's been an eventful weekend. Now we're going into a reset on the weekend. We got the podcast with AG to start it off, bro. It's about to be lit. Yeah, bro. Uh, Pred, how was your weekend? <laughs> Uh, no, it was good, man. Um, we needed it was a must win against Boston, so for us it was uh, very important to get the win, man. You know, obviously we didn't get to practice much since after the major. I had to go back to Australia for like personal reasons, so we're kind of under practice heading into this major. So yeah, which kind of sucks because you know, obviously the last two tournaments we've played in, we kind of did choke in a few situations. I mean, we lost around eleven for top three, yeah. but heading into those tournaments, I mean, we went four and one both splits. I mean, you know, we three zero phases beat Toronto, we beat some good teams um, to get there, but yeah, it kind of sucks. We just came on the practice this uh, major yeah we'll get into the uh, nitty-gritty of everything here in a bit uh but i just kind of want to start off with like man you uh you know year two being on a pro level you've obviously ascended like i think you're better than you were last year which is pretty crazy to to even think about um how's the season been man how's it treating you how are you finding competition like mentally are you in a good spot uh talk to me about the uh ups and downs of the season and how you're getting through it man year two uh, yeah, you know, year two in the league, um, man, it's going quick. Um, honestly, for me, it was um, I knew that I had a pretty good Vanguard year. So for me, I knew as an individual, I had to, you know, step it up a bit and keep progressing. I didn't want that to be like my final peak. I wanted to keep pushing myself to make sure I can get better and evolve my game. Yeah. So for my mentality, it was just, you know, it was driven simply off the fact of like, you know, I can be better, you know, like I was good last year, but I know I can be better. Um, so I just tried to improve some things, especially my SND. I feel like last year my SND wasn't as good as it was. So that's something that I really try to improve on. I feel like that was something that was holding me back. Um, but yeah, that's something that I, I personally uh, worked on myself. But the year's been good, man. You know, ups and downs. You know how it is with us Seattle boys. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man. Uh, other than that, everything's good, man. Just keep that's, grinding. That's crazy to hear that you say that you were just trying to improve off of last year. Because your rookie year was insane, bro. Like, you came in and you were taking down some of the best teams in the game. You were looking like the best player in the game in your very first year. So what were the things that you had to work on going into your sophomore year, bro, because I thought your rookie year was outstanding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, like I said, for the main thing was S&D. Respawn-wise and all that type of stuff, decision-making, like uh, being, you know, calm in certain situations and my mentality towards the game, like all that was good. I feel like it was just S&D, honestly, like, which is good for me. I didn't have to worry about too many things. I just had to play my game. But the S&D part, I just really needed to evolve, which I knew would help my team. So that's something that obviously heading into the year, um we're still focusing on our main stuff but then once we you know went in that s d drought couldn't win a game in s and i really really like started pushing myself to um make sure that doesn't happen again so what so what have you been working on in s d though like what's the things that you've been doing in search and destroy to get you better in that mode uh for me it's just mainly like finding out like routes that i can take um you know how to play certain situations you know when it's a 2v2 what, what i should do mm -hmm. um how to get bloods how to stay alive after i get my blood um just simple stuff, uh, knowing team's tendencies, like what players like to do on the other team, knowing what I can take, what I can't. Yeah. Just simple stuff like that, man. Just, you know, if I know a player likes to do this, I know I can hit this lane. Um, you know, after I get that kill, where's the next guy going to be coming from? I sort of have an idea pictured before I even the round even starts. So that's how I like to um, play my S&D, just one step so, ahead, which I feel like I wasn't doing before. So, Fred, we're going to unpack more of the Call of Duty stuff here in a bit, but I, I kind of want to yeah. ask you, like, all right, so obviously let's rewind a little bit. Um... <laughs> You are in Australia and you're competing yep. in the APAC region, right? And you were, were you competing during the CWL days, like when they had the different regions, uh, uh, like like BL4? Were you competing? Uh, during no, that I wasn't competing. I wasn't. I wasn't when competing you, then. When did you start? I started competing um, when I was in Modern Warfare. You started competing in Modern Warfare. You're this good. Uh, yeah, that's when I. That's that when I. Sense. That's when I. I mean, nah. I played like. 
I played like little tournaments and stuff when I was like under 18. I was playing like little tournaments and stuff, but um, Modern Warfare when I was actually able to play in like cups and and stuff like that. Wait, how how old are you, Fred? Me, I'm 21 right now. Okay, Jeez, so, so hold on. <laughs> nah, this guy was created in a lab, bro. There's no way. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Like, wait, you weren't compete. You start competing MW. Okay, so all right, I gotta know this. So how'd you you were playing S and D tournaments and you just figured out that there was like a whole pro scene or what? No, I, I mean, I knew there was a pro scene from like a while back, but I I, I barely played. I, I, I played, but I really didn't. I don't know. I can't really explain. I never scream. I, I only started screaming until Black Ops 4, but I only st I, but I quit halfway through that year. Um, okay. I don't know. I barely play. I'll be honest. I didn't really play COD as much as people probably think. I mean, my hours compared to probably like some pros is probably insane. IW, I didn't play the whole game. Uh, Black Ops 3, I didn't play. I only played half of it. Um, Black Ops 4, I only played half of it. Um, yeah, I mean... That's really it. And then I just Modern Warfare came and uh, I got picked up by the best Australian team. But that's because in Black Ops 4, I was frying everyone. And then I quit because I wasn't able to go to any tournaments. Nah, bro. Pred was on like an alt account or something playing on a VPN. Oh, no, God, bro. There's he no, had to be yacked up. No he yeah. just, just reimagined himself. All right. So, anyway, <laughs> so you start playing at MW. By the way, yeah. for people listening, this is not a normal come up. Like most people yeah, are not going to. No, most people are not going to gonna find this much success like that that early. But anyway, so you, um, you're nasty. You figured out throughout MW, obviously make some moves at the next like year and a half. Um, yep. and then you get picked up by a team, uh, who yep. like sort of, I guess, found you, like, when did you get your first buzz where you notice like, oh, people are starting to learn about who I am. Um, so it actually happened at the end of modern warfare. Um, cause I went to an international land, the Minnesota open before COVID hit mm -hmm. and, um, my team came top three or top four, sorry, at the tournament. And. I remember I was frying, like, I was frying teams, like, pro teams and scrims. I was frying, um, like, amps. I was super frying them. And um, I think someone noticed me. Like, I have an agent now, which is my agent called Steve Wang. He noticed me. Um, he picked me up as his, one of his uh, clients. Wow. And basically, at the end of uh, Modern Warfare, I, got a, um, I was going to join uh, Vegas. It was going to be me, Paco, uh, Denz, and Zed. We're going to be playing for uh, Vegas Legion. Or you Paris and Paco. Legion time. Wait. Yeah, we're... Oh my god. All right, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that, bro. It's like imagine Brad and Hydro on the same team right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah me and Paco, no, me and Paco were like literally sitting in team calls and like looking at like Airbnbs that we're gonna live at and stuff like that. Wow. We're gonna like that's how that's how deep it was. Like we're looking at Airbnbs and we're about to move it like I was about to move across the world and then um some visa issues had and then they wanted like a French team or something like that. And, and anyways, it ended up falling through and Paco okay. didn't end up going to the team. So then I had to play another year in Australia and um, and then, yeah, I got hit up by Brandon Nervous Vita and Sam Phoenix. They told me, yo, we're going to be the GM and the coach of Seattle. We want you on our team. And that's how it all started. They just approached me. And that's all right. It. So, so they approach you. They figure, so all that stuff happens that you get on a team and you're like, all right, I'm on yep. a CDL team. Like, and this all happens so fast. You come to mm -hmm. the U S how was it? Was it your first time coming to America when you, well, I guess, I guess that tournament was right. Uh, but yeah, the, the tournament, the M tournament. Yeah, yeah. that was your first time like coming to the US. In America now. Yeah, yeah. Like right. I, but for that tournament, I went to Detroit and I stayed there for like two weeks. We like boot camped for like Team Renegade. So Damn, I that's a pretty bad a... first impression of, of the US. <laughs> 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 to be honest, I stayed. I stayed in a nice place in Detroit. It's actually really nice. I stayed nice. in like some some bougie area. But um, I was gonna say, but yeah. Now moving to the states, like living here and knowing that I'm gonna be living here for six months and leaving my family was actually like. Honestly, it was actually like I didn't. It didn't really like click in until I was on that plane. Yeah. Like, once I was on that plane, and I knew I'm like, damn, like I'm about to meet people I've never met. I'm about to yeah. live on my own for the next six months. I don't know anyone. Everyone probably thinks I'm some Australian kid that doesn't even know how to play the game. You know what I'm saying? Like there was a lot of like yeah. thoughts going through my mind. But like I have super confidence in myself. I know Stud knows that. Yeah. Like I have super super confidence in myself. So I knew like as soon as I, I get think the opportunity, everybody knows that. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I, I was I was gonna get. I knew once once I got the opportunity, like I was gonna kill it. Like I knew I was gonna do well. For me, it was just more about like building a relationship with my teammates and like my coaches and stuff. Just make sure that like, uh, cause I need people there. I can't just do that stuff by myself. You know what I mean? I need yeah. like some sort of support system. So for me, that was important. But um, leaving my family behind and stuff was crazy, man. Nah, yeah, that's that's gotta be tough, AG. To fly yeah, all nah. across the world, man. play competitive Call of Duty. Obviously, you know what your skill is, but you don't really know how your story is gonna develop whenever you 100%. move in, man. But because people are in and out, first, right? Like yeah, people yeah, come people in and out of the league, out, you bro. never yeah. know. So that that's yeah. a big, big leap, man. I, yeah. It's crazy. Go ahead, Jay. Nah, so when so when you first got like on the plane, you landed in Seattle. 
No, it was Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. Dallas. Oh, Dallas. yeah, yeah. Okay. You're, you're in Texas, my yeah. bad. But now you're landed in. You're all soaked in. You're ready. You're locked into America now. What yeah. was like your big first purchase? What was your first? Yeah, no, because we're leaving out one life? part, though, Jay. He got a contract, like? too. He got the contract, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, you got some chicken. <laughs> so, so I know. I mean, I don't know. You're about, I don't know if you come from money or anything like that, but I do know yeah. that, like, it's a you get a contract with CDL, you're getting some decent cash. So, yeah. So, how I'll was that? My my it was pretty i'll be honest that's what my family didn't even believe anything i was telling them the whole time like when i'm like yo i'm about to be living in america they're like they didn't even believe me they just kept ignoring it because i come from a family where it's like very like european they didn't really believe in like gaming and stuff for them it's more like sports and school yeah. so they didn't really believe it i mean honestly they were trying to prevent me from playing because they thought i was wasting my time but once they saw the contract and once they saw that i was actually going overseas <laughs> and they're like holy shit like this is actually real like he's gone now like you know what i'm saying like then yeah. for them it started clicking in but my first ever purchase i actually went to a, uh, to the mall in dallas and i actually got a pair of lv uh sunglasses hell yeah that, that was my first purchase um yeah, went in there. Hey, yeah, how'd you yeah, feel in the lv them. store you were walking around uh, like like i'm ready uh, to get something or yeah, well, like how was yeah, it nah. Oh were... man, I love that. I'm I'm a frequent I'm a frequent spender though. I, I I'm a frequent spender at the LV stores and the Dior stores. Like, I I mm -hmm. always always go there. But when I got to Dallas, that was definitely my first like you know like welcome to the league vibe purchase. Yeah. So when you wait, so when on. you were in Australia, hold on, yeah, hold on. So when you were in Australia though, so I know that the food is completely different in Australia than it is. Yes, in Texas. yeah, it's healthier. What was what was that like, bro? Like. Go, what was it, like the first thing that was just like yo this shit is hitting bro every day like what <laughs> it, was, it was chick fil a bro holy shit bro. When, hey, when yes, i got my hand bro when i got my hands on that bro i said bro, this is dangerous bro like, <laughs> i'm bro I, late night when i'm hungry bro like this shit is gonna be busting bro i like I, I had to make sure that i was like kept myself away from that stuff because i knew like it's so easy to fall in that trap of just eating oh, yeah. that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely, I'm not even kidding. I tried every single thing out there. Like I made my, like one of my rules, like I had to try every single one out. And yeah. Chick-fil-A, by far when I first got it, was like, I would always sneak it in like twice a week. Hell yeah. yeah that's crazy because you couldn't even go on Sundays too, bro. So every yeah. week, yeah. six days out of the week. That's crazy, bro. Chick-fil-A be smacking the way you feel. Uh, it's him. insane, It's bro. crazy because everybody who comes here from like the UK or Australia, or they always go Chick-fil-A's fire. What are they putting mm -hmm. in Chick-fil-A, bro? Because it does yeah, slap. Yeah. Yeah. I got one like two minutes from the crib, so I'm I'm there nah, all the time. That's insane, bro. I don't know what it is. I think it's a sauce, bro. It's gotta be. It's gotta be the sauce, bro. All right, so Fred, so now you've been here for a bit, right? Uh, you're adapted to the U.S., the schedule, everything like that. You've been frying. Walk me through a week in the life of Fred. A normal week, like uh, league match week. Walk me through that. Uh, league match week. Okay, so recently I've been kind of in and off my gym grind, but if I'm on my like if I'm being on top of my stuff, I like to go to the gym in the morning. I uh, just do like cardio for an hour. Hold on. By like, morning, what time is that? Like around maybe 10 a.m. Oh, really? Okay, that's better yeah, than that's what I thought. Like, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get like, I'll try to drink like a black coffee in the morning. It tastes so bad. And then I'll just jump on the treadmill for like an hour. Um, after that, then we'll usually get to practice around 12 o'clock, do like a VOD test for an hour, shoot some bots, do some 2v2s, uh, and then we'll scrim the whole day. Then as we scream, I come home. I probably cook some food for myself. Probably cook some chicken and rice. Nice. Um, after I eat that, I'll probably go to the gym again, lift some weights. If not, I'll probably stream, play some eights and ranked. And that's honestly what I'll do Monday to Friday. And then whenever we have that match, I probably won't go to gym that day. I'll probably just, you know, just relax, go to the facility whenever we have to be there, and just warm up and lock in. So that's usually so, what I do every week. So everybody listening all you ams out there this is the play that's all you do all right because i know it's a lot of people out there that are not working out that are not cooking themselves meals that are probably ordering it ordering in a lot this is how yeah. you have a longer career that's actually pretty typical out of you was that something that you yeah. were doing uh prior to coming here because i know you said no, i wasn't I honestly wasn't because my mom was always cooking for me um so everything was easy when it came to that like my mom would just make me whatever i needed i'd go to the gym whenever i needed um, I was on a different schedule, but back home, I was like, I used to go like go to school and stuff like that. Um, so I was on a different schedule, but now I have so much more time in the morning because we start practice at 12. So like you have that whole morning to do whatever you want. And I feel like if you get in a good like cardio session, you just feel good throughout the day. And yeah. then, you know, when you come back home and you, it's very important to eat healthy, man. Like if you eat bad and you, you're just going to feel so bad, man. You have no fuel. I mean, like for me, I, like, I, I want to give my body as much the best fuel I can. So I always try, you know, make myself nice food and keep myself on top of my workouts and stuff like that.
what do you do like hobbies would you have any hobbies like i know you watch a lot of sports but like do you go out and do stuff like do y'all i don't know do you guys go play tennis or something like oh, i don't we know play basketball. we play basketball like almost all the time me oh, and really? that's team. dope yeah we yeah, play who's, basketball who's the worst who's the worst on the squad oh lamar accuracy and betty he <laughs> really i feel west. like he's like he's I the big like build bucket, bro right yeah, like, nah. oh, oh you would think he's pretty tall you think that's he's like rudy bucket. gobert out there come on nah <laughs> Wait, so Mac got the scars? What you telling me, AJ? No, Mac, Max got Max got actually got a jumper. Max got a okay. jumper, but he doesn't he doesn't really move much. Okay. All right. Wait, All do y'all right. do y'all do y'all go ball like a gym like a lifetime or something? Or? No, no. Honestly, like literally, like right across the street, there's like a court in the like uh, outside court. We just literally just, after practice, everyone goes to their rooms, quickly get something to eat, and then we just put some clothes on, and then we walk to the court. We play for like an hour. Two v two or versus randoms? No, two v two. We play two v two. Okay. Mm. West, Wait, bro. So it's actually it so be, hard. Don't tell me it's you, Dante versus Lamar. Nah, nah, nah. That'd be that'd be that'd be impossible. That that would never happen. <laughs> <laughs> what Dante's are the teams? Gross. What are the fairest it's, it's, teams? It's me and Mac. It's me and Mac versus uh, Dante and Lamar. Okay, bad. Oh, so y'all not getting yeah. no boards? Yeah, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest though, it's not Lamar getting the boards, it's Dante. That guy does everything. He will shoot, get his own rebound, shoot, get his own rebound. He just never stops running. He's bully like, he ball just, out there. That's he's just crazy. unlimited, unlimited stamina. Well, hell yeah, yeah. That's what we do. sounds like you guys have a good like uh life work balance because you you got to keep that i mean to, yeah to yeah have no, a long for sure career. that's good yeah, we play basketball get dinner stuff like that we always try you know we always hang out outside the game good um so now mm -hmm. as the second season is sort of getting towards the end as you reflect upon like this season now like i would say you know, the next year or two, you'd be entering like your vet phase. What experiences have you learned? Like valuable experiences. What have you learned throughout this season? Um, some experiences that I've learned is definitely, um, you know, the composure side of things. I mean, there's definitely times where you're going to be at tournaments or even in matches where it's going to be high intense, like high intense moments. And there's times where you need to, uh, how do I say it? Like control your energy in a way. I feel like that's something that's very important. Um, you don't want to over energize things or you don't want to under energize. I feel like you need to find that perfect balance where your teammates can focus at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. I know, I've, Cause I sometimes I, I know me personally, like bro, when I'm like peace and like, I'm going crazy. Like I'm mm -hmm. roaring, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, sometimes yeah. that's really good. Sometimes that is really good, but there's times where you need to calm the game down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. So, so that's something that I've definitely learned just like understanding that when there's times to do it. I mean, when you get a four dead and you know exactly where they're going to be, then you can roll. But when it's a kind of a, like, you know, awkward situation where you're missing one, you know what I'm saying? You want your, your teammates to try to talk to each other, find out where he is, like trying to like understand when to use that energy and not. So I think that's something that I've personally learned. Good. Yeah. I feel like we talked to um, Doug and uh, Dashy about this. Like when people are like screaming comms, bro, it gets toxic. Like it's super yeah. hard. Like, yeah. uh, I guess it's a team to team thing, but yeah, I mean, I think that's something I realized like about at like 21, 22. Yeah. I mean, I remember me and Jay having a long convo about like how to approach that, like how you fix that. Uh, when I watch you guys, I, I don't feel like you guys ever get like overly hyped though. Like everybody on your team is like really, really chill. Like Lamar's yeah. usually super like chill and focused. Dante, I don't know if I've ever seen Buddy smile. And then, <laughs> and then Mac, I don't know. He looks like he's a hostage at all times. So. <laughs> <laughs> now like we, we we definitely get loud sometimes um we definitely get loud sometimes it's like i said it's mainly me that gets super loud yeah it's um, you. but um as a team with kind of we have a decent balance like um sometimes matt gets super loud with me um it all depends really? like we have a decent yeah not mac usually does especially at tournaments um but it all depends really on like what's going what's going on but usually i'm the one that's just like just roaring bro do you wish they had more of that um like your teammates and this is no knock just like do you wish yeah. they maybe had more of that uh like warrior spirit kind of like like let's kill these guys you know what i'm saying because yeah. i now, used to, to get honest, that sometimes in my yeah now to be honest we kind of do like um like um dante does bring it we, we honestly do bring it sometimes like we they may not show it like from you guys watching but like us yeah. comms like as we're sitting there like we like i, I get that vibe like when we're at tournaments we're sitting in that setup like i get that vibe like yo like we're better you know better go in like yeah yeah ready okay. to roll. yeah yeah. You think that that feeling makes you play better? Or oh, no? for sure, yeah. for sure. When you just have 100%. that confidence, like, like yeah, yeah, man. When you when you go in, you know, like everyone's ready for war. Like that's a feeling that's like I'm I'm down. Like I'm ready. Did you, you got any like pregame rituals? AG? Is that nah, not really, man. Honestly, not really. I just listen to my music. I have to listen to music before. Uh, I feel like music. Was, yeah, um, I, I I switch it up. I listen to uh, Little Baby. I sometimes listen to that right. Boogie. Um, 
I switch it up, but mainly little baby. Little baby's usually my favorite. I'm glad you didn't say young boy. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say. All right. Um, all right. So next thing we have on here is uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, how have you taken in like sort of the community and everybody uh, considering you one of the best in the world? Like it's all over Reddit all the time. Whenever you guys are playing matches, like Preds to go, like he pops off. Mm -hmm. Is it like something you've had to like consciously be like, let me not let my ego t get too big. And also on top of that, like, really, how's it feel to be considered that? I mean, that's a special, that's a special thing when the community appreciates you, you know? No, hundred percent. I mean, the community has always been so good to me. I feel like they've always, you know, put me in a high, you know, high, high scale on, on the, on the players. I mean, I've always been regarded as one of the best players. So for me, it's, it's honestly a blessing that my game is getting noticed as, you know, one of the best. I mean, getting to hear that and knowing that myself and like, you know, when you know you're the best, but then you get that, like people signing off on it like they see your game and people yeah. understand that like he's that guy like then you get even more confidence so for me it's um you know it means the world i mean i put a lot of put a lot of work into my craft so i always i want to be the best and um i feel like i have the ability to be the best i just obviously got to keep improving but you know I'm, i feel like i'm definitely there man definitely there and yeah how, AJ, how do you continue to stay like inspired to play at such a high level because when i look at your guys team you guys are one of the best respawn teams in the game like you guys yeah. can go toe to toe with anyone you guys yeah. lacked off in the beginning of the year in search and destroy so it hasn't been sunny skies for you guys all year long but you have been the consistent factor regardless when it comes to the respawn even when you guys were on a 15 snd losing streak or really yeah. close to breaking that l record you were still holding like a 1.2 kd in snd so how yeah. do you continue even when stuff is not going your way to play at such a high level and pred before you answer this i really want a genuine answer here because this is something i yeah. really i really want to know this like yeah because it's hard like we both played we know how it is when mm -hmm. your team sucks and you're playing good you feel like it's these tough. motherfuckers are ass yeah. how am i supposed yeah. to win it? and it's easy to lose motivation i'm not saying your teammates are ass i'm just saying it's like when yeah, you're playing yeah. like that sometimes in your mind those things cross your mind right you might not say it publicly yeah. so you have graciously went through this i'll be honest i'll tip my hat yeah. to that because i haven't yeah. seen you blow up on your teammates ever as opposed yeah. to other people so i want to know like seriously how you, how you do that look i mean i'm not gonna lie it's obviously very tough you know when you feel like when i feel like i'm at a peak and i feel like i'm performing at a very high level and like when when the team's not winning and we're not doing this like for me it's just like uh, if i if i if i fold and i start you know being negative about it and i start thinking oh this person's doing this this person's doing that i feel like it's just going to make the whole situation a lot worse so for me it's very important to you know try keep a cool and calm head and understand the process you know like maybe yeah. i'm at a level and maybe other people are still getting to that level i just gotta we gotta try as a team to figure it out as, how we can make it work you know what i'm saying so one thing that's really important about our team is we can tell each other anything we're very um open we're very, like good friends so you know like people understand it's not like a secret like we always speak about it to each other so for me it's been very important to just keep a clear head i feel like i can't get you know stuck in the and all the stuff that's going on like i just gotta make sure that i keep improving my game and hopefully that as i keep getting better and keep improving the team as well as improving uh, as a collective so for me it's very important just to keep a clear head it's one of those uh interesting things and that's a very mature answer because it's like mm, yeah. sometimes if you're like one of the best or the most naturally gifted player on your team you'll be in these situations and you're just like why did, why can't you do what i do and i, don't, I yeah. think some people uh don't learn like until later in their career like you're just better than the other person so they can't do what you yeah. do right so it's uh it's hard to navigate so you know after pointing that out like how do you help your teammates sort of improve obviously mechanically you're a little more gifted than some of your teammates so mm -hmm. in order for yeah. them to work through their their stuff sometimes like what are the things you do as a teammate to prop them up so what i like to do is like for example like mac um we both play the same role we're both smg players like I always tell him, like, bro, like, if you have a situation where, you know, you, 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 you're you pushed out on a cut, I, I try to give him, like, a, like an idea on how I play that cut and how I read the situation. So, like, when he's in that situation, he has a bit of an understanding on how to play and what the best angles are. Just stuff like that. I always try to give him, like, ideas on, like, yo, like, for example, if I'm playing here, I like playing it like this. They usually come from here. Once you get that kill here, they can be here, care like this. So I try to give him a sort of, like, a flow understanding just so he gets a bit of an understanding. Um, and then... I don't know. I, I I do a lot of VOD research as well. I, I like to see what other teams are good at, what hills they're good at. Yeah. I think as a team, as a team, we do that. But for me, I know a lot of players and 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 teams' tendencies, um, which is like something that I try to tell my teammates to understand as well, which is really important. I mean, 
And for me, that's mainly how I try to tell them to get better. I mean, I'm not going to... Uh, everyone, everyone in the league can shoot straight. It's more about the mental side. So yeah. just how you understand the map and your awareness, I think that's the most important. So, AG, for a guy that has as much talent as you do, I'm just wondering where it all started from. Like, where did it all start? Like, what game were you playing? And was there, like, a specific guy that you saw that you were like, oh, I could probably do what that guy does? Because your play style is very unique. Oh, How did you okay. develop your play style? Like, who was the guy, I guess, on your come up that you were watching? Like, oh, I want to do exactly what that guy does, but at a different level. You know what's crazy? I actually, like, I, I haven't replicated anyone's gameplay, which is kind of crazy. Like, I never watched anyone and been like, yo, I'm going to do what he's doing. I've actually mm -hmm. never done that. Like, at all. Like, uh, it's kind of crazy to think, honestly, when I think about it now. I actually never actually generally watched, like, a pro or anything like that and been like, I'm going to do exactly what he's doing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. For me, it's just been like, I'm just going to go get my kill. Like, I know how to get my kill. I'm going to go play it. I'm going to go play it my way. And I, that's, I've always been like that. So I think that's why people, when they see me, my, my gameplay, they're like, like uh, he doesn't look like anyone that we know. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, like I said, it's very unique. So honestly, I kind of naturally just picked it up. I, I'll be honest. I didn't really... Yeah, I mean, I didn't really watch anyone and be like, oh, wow, that's a really good route. Yeah. That's a really good, like, I just started doing it. I don't know. Bro, I honestly don't bro, know. That's so crazy to say, bro, because you, you got to think. All the pro players that are coming up nowadays watch former pro players from back yeah. in the day. But you were in Australia. It's a totally different division over there. Like, you probably yeah. didn't get a chance to watch all these up-and-comers like, uh, like Skump play, who I think you have a great, great, like, just side-by-side -side when it comes to gameplay with, with the pre-aiming, with the taking p ma better map positioning. Yeah. I feel like you do that so you well. You would have worked well in other games, like the way that yeah, he yeah, plays. It would have translated really well it's to just, back in the day. It's just so crazy to me, like, when did you realize, like, what Call of Duty was it? Like, what Call of Duty started off for you, like, oh, I can go out here and be an absolute slayer, bro? Um, it was honestly probably, probably, probably Ghost, honestly. Wow, when I was playing, all the way back then, bro. You're probably, yeah, but, what, like, 12? Yeah, I was, like, 13, but I was playing, like, yeah, I was playing, with, I was, I was hey. playing with, like, I was playing plumbers, though, bro. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was playing plumbers. Like, Wait, hold on. Like the Wait, hold on. Hold on. Like the, pro, the, the, pros, the pros in that game could could have still been playing, all right, if we was making yeah. 300. <laughs> <laughs> I was I can't remember who I was playing but like people in Australia I don't know who I was playing but oh yeah like, you were playing plumbers for sure in Australia yeah, yeah, yeah actually. so that's my guy. yeah <laughs> yeah so I was definitely um I was def that's when I that's when I started getting like noticing myself get really good because I I was playing against the top Australians and I was frying them like because even some like I'm pretty sure was, uh, an Australian team came like T4 like Dens and someone yeah Luca and them His name and was, you're uh, 13 years old keep that in yeah. mind you're 13 years yeah. old going to be some grown ass men in yeah. a game where they were already professional Go ahead. yeah yeah that's when I that's when I was playing and I noticed like they, like they they just came fourth in the world like a champs so I'm like man I'm like maybe they're not like. You know what I'm saying? Like that's when I was like, damn, like I'm kind of fronting them. <laughs> and then the next game, the next game came out, and I played it again. And like I kept noticing myself getting better slowly. But to be honest, I never took it seriously though. I, I only, I'm like, damn, I'm fine. But like I don't, I play like maybe three times a week. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I wasn't really playing as much. But World War Two is when I actually took the game serious for like four months, and I was like, I was trying so hard. And I think two Australian teams made the made the pro league, and. I remember playing them, and I just remember frying them. Like Fido, I Luca, I remember those guys? Yeah, yeah. Like even the uh, Tainer Mines team, stuff like yep. that. Yep, them too. But yeah, that's when it started. I just started playing some um, some pro team, uh, some pro Australian teams that were like playing in, uh, overseas, and I just noticed myself doing well against them. So I always thought that I I could do it if I took it serious. That's crazy, bro. You're sitting there 14, 15, 16 <laughs> years old. You know what? Just though? giving it to these players, bro. That's nuts, bro. You know what though? It, it uh. I kind of like I relate to that a little bit because when I started playing COD it was COD 2 and there was a bunch of old men playing and I was 12 years old and I ended up joining one yeah. of like the better teams mm -hmm. like sometimes like you just naturally have it and that's kind of what it sounds like with you because you're just yeah. naturally were just good it's just kind of crazy because you're naturally just good after there's been like eight years of mm -hmm. people playing Call of Duty at a pro level so that's yeah. super super typical um, and it's not like he was taking it serious the entire time, bro. He just said yeah. that he was taking it serious for four months during World War II. He jumped yeah. from Ghost when he was like about 12, 13 years old and lacked Whoa. off the next couple of years until World War II came out. Yeah. Like, like, really locked but in for four months. So yeah. did you, you watch the, the Australian teams when they were over here? Like, did you, you no, know, I, I'll you be honest, know any I, of them? Yeah. Yeah, no, I did. I did. Well, I watched the Dan Shox, uh, Fighter, Buzzer. Like, I watched them play overseas. Um, I watched the Tanner Mines boys playing World War II. I, I, I used to watch them. Like I was generally like I generally loved watching them. Like I was very interested to see like the people that I play against, how they're doing against the pros. 
Um, obviously, like at times, I obviously got super fried. But I was like, damn, like, these other these Americans must must be godlike. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's <laughs> yeah. what I was thinking. Did I'm, you did you go to the tournament that they had over there? We had one tournament there, only optical. Nah, nah, nah. The Crown nah, Invitational. Nah, that, that was Black Ops Three. I was on. I was like 16 or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't end up going, but there was, yeah, I remember that was t- tournament Australia, but I wasn't, I didn't end up going to see, uh, watch the game. So, uh, obviously it's not as big in Australia, the COD esports scene, but mm-hmm. yeah. have you had any like Australian fans reach out to you and be like, this is super cool or any of the former Australian pros like Buzzo, Fida, Luca, Shox, these guys reach out to you and sort of like show their support at all? Oh yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I, I played with Shox, Fighter, and Luca in Cold War before I came before I came pro in Vanguard. So I was playing, I was teaming with them three, um, and you know they gave me super support. I mean, they told me how the league is, like stuff like that. They gave me a bit of insight because they played in the league in Modern Warfare for Paris. So they gave me super support. Um, all the people in Australia always message me, supporting me. Um, they always watch my games. They have discords where they all just sit in live chats watching me. That's so dope. Um, no, so like, no, I, I, they give me support, man. I appreciate it a lot. So whenever I come back to Australia and I play like an eights there, like nowadays, like when I go back to Australia for like Christmas and stuff, oh and God. I go play an eights, You're probably, it's actually hilarious. Yeah, they go so hard. I'm playing like you're a reggae. You're straight up frying. Yeah, and I date, <laughs> like, yeah, no, they're going so hard. I just got a bit of music in, like just playing, like they're going so hard. Of course <laughs> they're going hard. They're like, wait, I got to fry bread. Yeah. Uh-huh. 100%. Um, all right, so I feel like I, I learned a lot about like your and stuff, but I want to talk about the current year. Um, now. Yeah, so Seattle Surge, I mean, you guys, I feel like you started the season pretty good. I mean, obviously, yeah. good performance. Uh, 2023 hit, and it just hasn't been that great. I know it's it's been tough for you guys to talk about and stuff and, and work through, but I want to kind of pick your brain a little bit. In your head... If you're like sum up what the issue is, like what is the primary issue uh, with with you guys in, in your land performances? Honestly, I mean, if you think about it, right? Major one became second, very good. Um, yep. Major two, I mean, we had that, all that optic stuff. I mean, which is obviously, you know, we were heading in. Like, I didn't, I, I ended up staying in Australia for a week longer because. I mean, I didn't know what team I was on. You didn't know I what you were doing, yeah. I didn't know what I was going to be. So I'm like, um, there's no point in me even coming back. I I'm not going to even be screaming. I'm not going to be doing anything. So we had to wait out that process. We were all like, sort of like, I was planning to be on Optic. My teammates were planning to play with other players. So like, everything was happening. So, and then we, all of a sudden we had to all like, come back together and be like, yo, we're still a team. We got to like, practice now. So Major 2 was always going to be tough. So, which obviously ended up to us having that result. Major three, I mean, we played, we went four and one. We had a, an amazing online split. We beat two top teams in it. We beat Toronto and FaZe. We played really good. Um, you know, we went round 11 with FaZe for top three. I mean, if we win that series, we're top three. We're in the winner's final. Who knows what happens? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to be playing Toronto in God, the winner's final. Fired, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, we had it insane. Like, that, that tournament, we could be top three, potentially in the final. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. so that's like very. And then we came against, we lose that round 11, which is so, like, tough. A tough way to lose. And then we have to, literally, 30 minutes later, we have to load in and go play against Optic in front of the green wall. Like, yep. you know what I'm saying? So, like, it, it was a tough back-to-back, you know what I'm saying? So, we were obviously mentally compromised heading into that match. Obviously, we tried our best to regain, but it was obviously very tough. Um, so, we lose to them. We load into the next online qualifiers. We go 4-1 and one again. So, another very good online qualifier. We get to the LAN. Uh, we play phase round one. We lose to FaZe, we play to FaZe, lose to FaZe, we beat them in online a week ago, 3-0, and then they beat us on, on land 3-1, I think. Mm-hmm. So we lose to FaZe, very tough, we play LAG, we beat them, and then we play Minnesota Rocco, we're up 2-0, there's 15 and seconds left of control. In the, in the control yes. yeah. to play, 2-0 and 2-0 in the control, 15 seconds left for us to win 3-0 in the control and 3-0 and just move on and play New York for T4. They end up winning that round, winning that map, winning the next map, and then... <laughs> I'm you know what I'm saying? It's just, laughing, a big, it's, just, it's just a collapse, bro. Like that it, is the big twist, it, dude. It's not like you know what I'm saying. Like we're heading into these tournaments looking good, but we're, we're, we're well pre- uh, prepared, and we just get to the tournaments and we just we just broke down. I mean, as simple as that. We just broke down. So why and, though? Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's it's a question when you look at the mini map. You're like, bro, if we just aim this one door for another three more seconds, we just shoot the guy that comes out and we win. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's as yeah. simple as that. It's like you can't sit there and like deconstruct the whole map. It's like. Bro, we played perfect. We just, we made that mistake. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's it's tough, man. And now that takes me into the discussion where like, all right, we've seen 
three uh, four stages almost five stages complete now yeah it's been a lot of talk about seattle surge like you guys have you you guys have sim you guys are basically the all-stars for your team accuracy yeah. and mac are probably a little bit inconsistent here and there but there was always a lot of outside noise coming to this roster there was multiple situations where me as a caster for you guys i thought yeah. that you guys were in an opportunity to potentially make a roster change yeah. but you yeah. guys simply do not make that roster change is it yeah it's obviously not due to talent because i know all you guys believe in each other yeah do you think it's just because of those little mistakes like those little mistakes happen we lose yeah. but if those yeah. mistakes don't happen we're the best team in the game like i mean yeah. with t3 yeah, I mean, honestly, we're T3, Major 3. We went 4-1. and one. We had the number one seed. That's like, that tournament's a dub. If you're T3 and you're playing, and who knows what happens. We could be playing Toronto, mm -hmm. and we could beat them and we're in the grand final now. That's two yeah, grand finals know. and three yeah. tournaments. That's three. That's two grand finals and three tournaments. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's good. I mean, that is. and and then we go 4-1 and one again. We're beating, we're beating top teams to go 4-1. and one. Like, we're playing against good teams. We're beating them. We're practicing well. Um, So, like, for us, it's like, we know that potential is just like, how do we, how, we just can't execute at the tournament. And it's like, mm -hmm. who do we bring in? Who can we bring in that's going to make us execute that's better than what we ar originally have? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and we also have a brotherhood. Like, the way we are as a team, it's like, we're so close that, like, there's no, like, if something's on our mind, if there's something going on, like, we tell each other immediately. Like, it's right then and there. There's no, like, you hold it in, you go back, you, you practice, but you're not telling the person how you really feel. Like, we're not like that. We're that's very healthy, straight man. up with each other. So, like, yeah. we have a very healthy team. Like, it's very healthy. There's no internal issues. Like, no one hates anyone. We're very yeah. close. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, 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 like, we're so close. Like, that's what's most important about us. And, like, even Lamar, he's teamed for, like, however long he's teamed. And he said he's never had a team like this where he feels so connected and as one. You know what I'm saying? Which is very important. For us, we just needed to... If we just did what we needed to do and handled our business in those tournaments when we were up and we had the leads, I mean, bro, like no one would be speaking about anything. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And that's and that's crazy that you say brotherhood because you yeah. just said it like at the at major two you didn't know what team you were going to be on if you were going to yep. be Optic Pred if you were still yep. going to be on Seattle yep. and the fact that you were in Australia for a week and realized nothing was going to change it's like you guys instantly picked it right back up like yeah. nothing ever happened bro so that brotherhood is definitely strong. keep going to be too strong in the basketball yes and all of my beauty, bro just keep that bond strong yes. because that bond that, is what's going to take you guys that, to that next level that being said though like have you guys ever had a discussion of like yo if this doesn't work like we will have to do something like have you talked with management at all about it or has it just always been like full trust in, in you guys like are you guys like uh I don't want to like this is probably the wrong term but like living in fairy tale land or are you guys really honest about it and like realizing like if we don't find success in the next two tournaments we're probably make we're probably end up breaking up no honestly like i feel like during that optic situation obviously my team was fully supportive of me they knew that the the, the opportunity to present it was huge you know what i'm saying like, yeah, that's crazy. Opportunity. so like they understood that they were very supportive like there was no bad blood between that but i feel like um the way we performed in major two and how we were in such an snd slump like we knew if we didn't turn it around for major three like it was going to be tough for us to say if we like went one and four came last and then went one and four and came last again i mean mm -hmm. there's no the, no matter how tight the brotherhood is you can't play together i mean yeah, obviously yeah. something's not working you know what i'm saying yeah. but we turned it around we went we just came second out of the tournament optic stuff happened major two was a blowout whatever major three were like all right look all this stuff's happened we need to turn it around we cannot mm -hmm. perform like that again or else this team is probably not going to stay we all said that as a collective we knew like that was not going to be like we're very That's upfront. Good, we man. know, you know, what I'm saying we're not going to be like, oh my god, if we go one and four, it's all good. We'll figure it out. Let's play the next tournament. Like no, like it's a short season. You have five tournaments, including champs. Like there's no time to like you know waste. You know what I'm saying? There's no wasting no. time. Yeah. So yeah. for us, we're very uh, honest. And then obviously, you know, we we uh, picked it up. I mean, we went four and one, secured first seed, and we're in a very good situation to be top three at that event. So. And you guys yeah. are what two and one right now, right? I think. No, we're or... one or two. We're one, one or two. two. Okay, okay. Yeah, one yeah, or two. One or two. Tough matches first. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I yeah. cast one. That was a good one of you guys. Yeah, now nah, Toronto, we only had two days of practice. Like I said, I had to yeah. go back home after, so we didn't really get to even play the game. And obviously, they just had a bad qualifier last split, so they were going to come out with vengeance. So yeah, yeah. So it was a tough game. Yeah. That takes um, us into our next discussion right here, where. Obviously, we've seen you guys at the beginning of the stage. You play against Optic Texas, you get 3-0. Yep. You play against Toronto Ultra, you get 3-0. Then you yep. play Boston Breach, you beat them 3-1. Big win. Is it a matchup thing? Do you think, like, there's certain teams that match up better than you guys or there's certain teams that outmatch you guys? Because, like, there's some teams that are obviously like the Optic Texas who are one of the best hardpoint, if not the best hardpoint team in the game. They just look like a whole different level. But yeah. when you guys, say, for instance, when you guys always play in Atlanta, every time on land, it's high, it's going to go all the way to the very end. But sometimes, yeah. the majority of the time it goes to Atlanta. Is it like a matchup thing? Who's your toughest guys that you guys go against? Honestly, like, 
we've never had a bad matchup. But recently, um, pardon me, recently Optic have been definitely because of their map pool. I feel like their map pool is very strong in Hardpoint. They have lockdowns, yeah. yeah. They just have maps where they're just beating teams by 80 points every time. You know what I'm saying? It's like, for them, for them the, map, the map, uh, map pool is a bit tough. But everyone else is actually very good. But I feel like that's with everyone. Like, Optic's map pool of everyone, when it comes to that, is pretty good because of just yeah. their record. Mm -hmm. But honestly, when we play FaZe, like, we love playing FaZe. I mean, we're happy to play FaZe. Like, I'm, I'm, we're taking, like, we're happy to play in FaZe. We match up well against them. We've played them so many times. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, Thieves, we also like playing against them. Um, they're a good control team. And we feel like we're a good control team as well. So, we, um, you know, we tend to play against them as well. So... For us, we match up pretty well with every team. It just recently, like Optics hardpoint pool is just very like wide and strong. Like they have a really good hardpoint pool. So for them, they just have a wide range of uh, maps. So that's like the only team that obviously brings a lot of issues because just of their map pool. But yeah. other than that, when it comes to like stuff like that, I feel like we're pretty pretty confident. So so I want to ask you, like uh, from the majority of the season, I would say up until major four, actually up until honestly, yeah, at the major and now, you guys were top three respawn team. Like yep. you guys were, I was confident in picking you guys in the hard points or control versus basically anybody. Uh, what has happened like uh, in the respawns? Is it just other teams like sort of catching up a little bit or is it uh, you guys put your focus elsewhere? Cause I feel, I feel like Mac had these like pop off performances in the first two, three majors, like where he's always been sort of the guy who's like a little bit inconsistent, but recently yep. he's taken a bigger dip. Uh, but the team overall as a unit as well in respawn has taken a little bit of a dip. So, uh, why do you think that is? Uh, well, honestly, like I said, after Major 4, we had that massive break where we didn't, pl I, we didn't play for like 12 days. And I came back, we had two days of practice, and we loaded into our qualifying match. So, it's kind of teams picking up their intensity in practice because it's getting towards the end of the year, champs time. So, everyone's trying to pick it up a notch, sure. watching more VOD, they're getting better at respawn, whilst we did nothing. We didn't even do anything for 12 days. We had uh, 12 days of not competing whilst every day a team is playing. Is it's hard to do, yeah. It's hard to like they're getting ahead, you know. So they were getting ahead, and we were stuck at that same spot. So we had to be, we have, we've been trying to catch back up, you know what I'm saying? So for us, it's been like we were just um, underprepared, honestly. And teams are just getting better. I mean, the league is so competitive. People are gonna notice what's good, what's not. You know, they're gonna all reflect on what's working, what isn't, and they're gonna see what's good and they're gonna put it together in their own way. So the league is just super competitive. It's always evolving. So that's why you see a lot of different winners, a lot of people winning different tournaments, just because everyone's always making changes and. Yeah, it's competitive, man. So, so in your current form, do you feel like if you guys spawn into a major right now, like realistically, you guys could win it? That ass. I mean, honestly, like, honestly, me personally, and I'm sure my team thinks the same. I'm we're super confident, man. We know like, that's good. When the backs are against the wall, when the backs are against the wall, like, I mean, bro, we could not play. We could we could have vetoed one map the whole year. We could like we're we're, we're like dumb delusional where we could like load into that map and think we can win. You know what I'm saying? Like. Okay. We're just like we're just <laughs> that's like good. that's how we think. Yeah, we never load in thinking, oh no, like we haven't played well in this map. Like, nah, we, you know what I mean? Like, we might even yeah. get slammed on that map. We might get a hundred point club. Well, in our heads, like we're going like as if we can win. So, <laughs> good. So that's one thing I'm really happy about my team. We never have um we never shy away from the situation. AJ, are you guys nervous right now in your current situation in the point standings? You're sitting in that six spot. Oh, they're good, ain't it? Honestly, they're, they're, we're, they're, we're, they're technically like a highest out of all. You got Vegas yeah. Legion where I was in at one fifty, but say for instance they bomb out and they lose the next yeah. couple of matches. But honestly, like, the way I'm uh, confident enough to make sure yeah. you get your chance spot. Yeah, no, I agree. The way I see it, um, is like if we don't make it and we uh this situation right now, we just you know, don't get any points and every team does well. I mean, we just don't deserve to be there. Simple yeah. as that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, oh, damn, we got unlucky. Nah, man. Like, we had the chance to secure that. If we didn't, we don't deserve to be there. I mean, what's the point? We're going to go to champs, play eighth. And what, like, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're not going to even win. Like, that's how I see it. Obviously, you want to make champs. Um, you want to be super confident about it. But for us, for me, it's like, we need to be playing at a level where we're competitive. So, I mean, if we make champs and we get to make a run in champs, I mean, that means we deserve that. We worked hard to get there. If we're not, then, you know, we fell short and we should be disappointed with ourselves. Um, so, all right, bet. So, uh, to wrap up, like, this season, I guess, what's the plan for the rest of the season? Like, are there going to be any changes in terms of practice schedule or where the focus is sort of on? Does it change because champs is coming up? Uh, like, talk to me about that. Usually when it's champs time, I mean, you just pick up the VOD sessions a lot more. Like, you start yeah. doing, like, one in the morning and one at night time, you know what I mean? Start picking it up a notch. Um, definitely start, you know, because it's coming down to this crunch time. A lot of people and a lot of players and a lot of teams are going to have their own tendencies where there's things that they like to do. It's auto-lock. You know, they're going to be doing that stuff no matter what. 
because that's what they make. That's what they, like when high pressure situations, you tend to do what you're most comfortable with. And so for us, it's just like a lot of odd sessions, noticing what's good, noticing what's bad. Uh, what to take what to you know get rid of just trying to like improve yeah. our game you know what i mean so that's the most important thing so definitely just improving the wad work and taking taking the intensity and practice to another level so obviously you still got to focus on this year but i just wanted to yep. know are you are you on like a one plus or a two plus one or like how's your contract like where can you give that info out like are you yeah okay. i mean after this season i'm gonna be a free agent so uh, you're about to get fit. the bag brother <laughs> <laughs> so once this season finishes i'm going to be a free agent so that means obviously i'll be able to go to whatever team whatever i want um you know what i'm saying so for me i'm fa so yeah, so what are, what are your what are what are your what are your what are your goals though like uh obviously you want to win um would you like take pay cuts in order to to get a dub like or like you know like what's your um, mentality when it comes to that honestly it depends like it has to really depend uh, obviously winning is number one i mean i feel like winning and like the future you want to make sure that uh, because the decision i make is probably going to be for the next three years right i'm probably yes. going to sign something like that so for me it's a very important to make sure that i make the decision best for my future you know what i'm saying yeah like, your life and, and, and your exactly and your like status, the next yeah. three years is important man like you, yeah. you, i don't want to make a wrong decision i don't want to jump into something that i'm not fully confident in so for me, I have to understand the surroundings and how everything is going to work. And I want to make sure that I make the best decision possible because, like I said, it's very important. I want to be, I just want to be in a good support system where I know I can strive and where my team can win. I want to win. I want to, I want to get a ring. I want to, I want to make my own legacy. I don't want to just be like a Bradley Beal or something like that. I want to be able to like win tournaments, win championships. You know what I'm saying? Great like comparison. That's me. Not going to take a yeah. bag and be on a shit team. I love that. Yes. Yeah. But... Yes. So if Seattle kind of comes at you and you guys play well, you got a top three or something at champs and they match every offer you get from everywhere else. Like, would you be willing to like stay with like a, a, this roster or are you kind of like just in, in the mode of like, I'm going to entertain basically anything at the end of the season? I mean, we'll have to see what happens. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's obviously like a big what if, you know, depending on how we do a champs and, you know, the offer that I get mm -hmm. um, from Surge and stuff like that. All that kind of stuff, it all depends. Um, so a big question mark it's honestly all going to unravel in the next couple months uh next month sorry so yeah it's all it's all going to be a waiting right now it's a waiting game it's just see what happens you know what i'm saying but yeah like i said I, i'm going to make the best decision i can that's for sure got a crazy couple of months coming up my brother <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have to be on point man make sure you're out there playing yes. some ball like doing some meditating 100%, 100%. like it's gonna be you got you got so, a crazy couple of years coming or a couple months coming up yeah so ag uh, yeah. Let's take a step into the future, right? Let's go 20 years in. When you look back at your Call of Duty career, what do you want it to look like? Like, what is Pred's resume when he's done playing Call of Duty? Because two years in, you're already Rookie of the Year. You won an MVP at a tournament. You have yet to win one this year. But whenever you're done playing Call of Duty and you got to look back at all the stats that pop up, what do you want that to look like for you? I want it to look like that. You know, I left the, uh, that I was on a dynasty squad. I want to be on a dynasty, dynasty. team. But I want to be on a dynasty team. And I want to also be, like, recognized as one of the best SMG players to ever play the game. Like, I want to be noticed as the player that no one, like, no one could replicate. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was my own guy. You know? Like, mm -hmm. I was that. Like, he was him. Like, no one played like him. He was that guy. What he'd done, no one else could do. I want to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be on a dynasty squad and a, my, my status and my legacy to be known as, like, like I said, one of the best SMG players. You, you're so young. You're only second. Your second year into the league. Like, yeah. how many rings you want to get? Because you know that's how you cement yourself in Call of Duty. Legacy. Yeah, hundred percent. You gotta uh, get a ring, bro. So yeah. you get a ring, it, and and you saying you want to be on a dynasty. A dynasty is like winning a couple tournaments in a row, bro. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I want to win as much as I can. I want to play as long as I can. I'm only 21. I got plenty left in the tank, man. So I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to get that going now. I'll be honest. I just want to start I, as soon as I can. I mean, I want to, I want to start winning now and just start stacking them up. Get that cabinet. Stacking it, baby. Put get it, it filled up. up there you go. Yeah. Um, all right, bet. Uh, I'm excited to see how, how that uh, unravels coming going forward, but also more excited to just see how you guys bounce back. I feel like you guys are a pretty cool story. I think you guys mm -hmm. are getting a lot of hate right now. 
yeah. uh, by the community and stuff. It's weird, ain't it? Like uh, that people literally get frustrated that you don't make a yeah. roster change. Like, like uh, I've been, I've been out. Like I've been frustrated with some teams not making roster changes. But that's if they're like literally bottom of the barrel and don't have like talented mm-hmm. players and the clearly is not working. Yeah. But you guys, like, there's an argument as to why you should keep your team. It's weird, yeah. isn't it? How the community sort of like will be like, we demand it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know. No, it's honestly like people just don't. People just, I mean, honestly, people just don't understand, like, like our camp. And, I mean, we don't, we don't have to explain everyone what we do and how we operate yeah. our camp. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one, not everyone has to know that. Yeah, not So, for us, it. it's like, for us, it's like, obviously, people are going to hate, people are going to disagree with our decisions and stuff like that. For us, it's just mostly important to make sure that doesn't come inside our camp. You know what I'm saying? Like, we want to yeah. make sure everything stays outside. So, for us, people can say what they want. Everyone has their own opinions, Um, you know. It is what it is. I mean, any sport, anything, people always have stuff to say. You just got to ignore it, man, and just keep yeah. keep rolling with your team. And like I said, just all, all that matters is what's inside the camp. So I got we got a couple more topics to get through. I know we're coming up here on time, but yep. uh, I wanted to ask you sort of about the rest of the league and get Fred's take on some of these things. Um, what do you think are like the current best players in your mind? Not community perception in your mind. Like you, you go up against me like this guy's nasty. Uh, yeah. Who is it? Like give me like three or four people you look at. And you're like that guy's gross. Um, I think, um, I'd say MC Selim. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's a he's a he's a hard kill. Me and him don't really get into gunfights with each other because the way we play, we kind of avoid each other. Mm-hmm. But um, I just notice him um always doing well. Um, MC Abizi, me and Abizi have insane gunfights all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, like me and him have insane gunfights. Um, Hydra as well. Me and Paco have insane gunfights. I mean, you could probably ask him every time me and him have a gunfight, we always talk about it. It's like one of us is always like one HP. It's always like it's like he never walks around, and kills me, and it's like it's a free kill. It's always like me and him always, always make each other one HP, and we always joke about it when we see each other at tournaments and stuff. But um, that's him, and I'd say I'd say Shotzi as well. I'll say okay. Amp. Because the way Ant plays is like a rat. Yeah, it's the he's very right? yeah. yeah Ant Ant gets Ant like I'm usually lost in their base and Ant's usually lost in our base. So it's mm-hmm. like it's a battle of like who's staying lost the most and who's impacting that side of the map more. You know what I'm saying? Like he's maybe yeah. getting too. I gotta try like get a kill now and relieve some pressure. Like mm-hmm. so I know I noticed that with Ant. Um, but yeah, definitely those players. Um, I noticed the most for sure. Bro, Jay. So those are your tough matchup, but who are your easy matchups? Hold on, before, on, before, man. before that, before matchup? that, before that, I just want to say, after hearing you say those names, I'm like, we got the sub duel, we got Shotzi, Hook, right? We got a BZ and Simp. No disrespect yeah. to Mac, because I think Mac is, is an underrated player, but man, yeah. you and Hydro would be a nasty ass. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it, I would like, love to, he mentioned it earlier. I was like, I would love to see that, that duo like to be teaming up. It'd be crazy. No disrespect yeah. to Big Kizzy either, because I know hey, the yeah, Bulldog's yeah. nice. He is nice, yeah, um, he is. but I won't. Hey, I won't have you unpack that one. Bro. Yeah, it was the easy. Honestly, match yourself for you. Honestly, um, like you look at them on the map, you just be like, "You seriously challenging me, bro?" Like, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Uh, I'm actually gonna say slasher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen. I knew we would get alarmed because I felt like that too. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> when I see slasher on the map. I just have a tendency of just being like, bro, it's Slasher, just chow him. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, damn. But um, nah, Austin's my boy, but definitely him. I just, I don't know, for some reason, I just have like a delusional ego against him because I feel like the way he plays, it's like he hates when subs run up close to him and just get like those close range gunfights with him. So I think he hates like having that situation happen. So, and I tend to make, try to make that happen to him as much as I can. What about Clay? <laughs> Do you feel the same way when you match up with Clay? Clay's oh, actually oh, like Clay's actually the quickest man AR. I feel like he flies, bro. Like I feel like yeah. he's flying. Yeah, Faster than Scrap? Yeah, he's like up there. I think I think Clay flies personally. Yeah, he does. Like, he's pretty quick. Yeah, he's pretty quick. Um, but yeah, for me, definitely Slash is Slash is up there for me for sure. <laughs> well, I ask you about Clay because I want to know. Uh, there's obviously a big bubble race that maybe you guys put a little bit of attention to just because of the rut you guys are in and the points and stuff but you got the big yeah. win over boston so you're kind of chilling but looking down at that bubble we got minnesota and we got vegas it's yeah. been crazy brother like who do you think is gonna make it in um obviously afro got benched <laughs> for attached yeah, today I, 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 yeah that's crazy i didn't know that was gonna happen what you, they, what's your thoughts on that real quick yeah they put um, fame on sub now so mm-hmm. yeah i mean i just i honestly didn't know that was gonna happen um I was kind of mind blown by that, uh, but at the same time, yeah, I, I think I think Vegas, 
it's tough. I think Vegas are, are heading in the right direction. You know, um, he Vegas definitely heading in the right direction. You know, TJ and Don, they're my guys. So, and, you know, I hope they um, end up playing well. But obviously, I get to have to play them this weekend. So, and I know yeah. it's a big match for them. Mm -hmm. But those two are my guys. So, I hope to see them in Vegas. You know, we're going to have some fun in Vegas. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not too sure. It's, it's a tight race, man. I feel like it's very competitive right now. It's 10, 20 points difference between a lot of teams. And But you guys you know, play Vegas, right? That's your... Yeah. Ooh, you got to play spoiler. <laughs> now, that's a big one for yeah, you guys. Do yeah. you guys... Uh, I don't remember last time y'all matched up. Have y'all played this game? You must have, right? uh, Major 2, match uh, qualifier 1, I think, something like that. How'd that go? Uh, I think they beat us 3-2. Really? Okay. They, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they beat us 3-2. That was when y'all were sure. terrible. Y'all were ass at S&D, right? Oh, yeah. We were like, yeah, we got yeah, Nezla yeah. by everyone. One of the best S&D team in the game. You yeah, know what I'm saying? We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So I also wanted to ask you, uh, you know, talking about the rest of the league, uh, in terms of like teams, who do you feel like is your hardest competition? Not the best team in the game, just like a hard, the hardest matchup for you guys. Is it phase? Is it optic? Like which one? Um, the hardest matchup I would say is honestly would be tough uh, i don't know honestly like i said it'd probably be optic just because of how good their hard point map pool is mm -hmm. i feel like their their hard point map pool is really good i mean they're a really good fortress stream uh, fortress team which we also think we're good at but they've obviously been elevated their game extremely on that um so i feel like just simply optic just because of their hard point pool do you yeah. think Gozi was like a big reason to why they're now finding a lot of success ever since he was added to the team like they basically look unbeatable in that mode is he the main oh. reason why Hundred percent. He's not. I wouldn't say the main reason. I would say it's a collective, but he's definitely a a huge impact on on their team. I feel like his comms and his his dedication and all that type of stuff. You know, it's a it's a big chance for him. So he's obviously doing as much as he can. So big props to him for, you know, taking that role and you know making the most of it. Oh yeah. Um. All right. So now it's time for the most fun part of the show. It yeah. is the friendly fire segment. We're going to ask you a couple of series of uh, either ors. It's going to be these players in their prime and who you're taking. So, Jay, why don't you kick it off? Hey, you got the first four. Uh, okay. Start it off, my brother. All right. So here we go, AG. Friendly fire segment. Who you taking in their prime? Crim6 or Clayster to start it off? Uh, Crim6. No question? Insta. Like, that was Insta. 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 I mean, yeah. Crim, was, Crim was fine. I, I just remember seeing him play Ghost sometimes, and he was insane. He was pre he was pretty fun. Yeah, nah, he was yeah. annoying to play against and go, yeah. bro. He boy hate on Krim, but the actual like, if we're taking strictly like prime that player on his best day and his best moment, Krim was unreal, bro. Yeah. Jay, we experienced yeah. this. I mean, we got I six know. o's. We got in the final. Bro, we got in six the final, like, and they was in losing bracket, bro. Like, yeah. well, I was talking yeah. about the final after that. Where we got nah. six o's. <laughs> <Yeah>, we got, <laughs> got slid everywhere when we played that. <laughs> All right, so that takes us into the next one, brother. Another set of world champions. Who are you taking in their prime? Attach or Parasite? Uh, I'll take Attach. Why? I feel like Dylan's maybe been, like, better on, like, more games as they've gone. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like I feel like Dylan. I didn't really watch that much of Black Ops 2, so I don't know how good um, Parasite mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just, I'm just going to take Dylan. I know he won AW champs. He was like the youngest ever champs winner. So, you know, he, yeah. had to have been, he had to have been pretty good. You know what I'm saying? So He was great. I'd, yeah, I'll take Dill. All right. Okay, okay. So now that takes us to the next one. Who are you taking in their prime? I don't really know if you got a chance to at least watch one guy when he was playing, but I definitely know you watched the other. You're taking Spacely, Mikey, or you're taking Fellow? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good matchup? So I'm saying. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I actually don't know. Holy <laughs> um, man, uh, I'm gonna have to take my boy Space. Yeah, oh, Mike. Just Space. don't let him yeah. have Heat Wave. Yeah, don't, I'm, don't. I'm, letting I'm, letting you know, I'm letting you know, you TV Mike, bro. He always sound like he raging, bro. He's one shot, bro. His monotone <laughs> voice, bro. I'm like, I know, that's bro. I, I, he's bro. tilting, bro. I can't play too good with him. He's always sound like he's crying all the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time, yeah, bro. bro. I'm like, Yo, Mike, you gotta chill, bro. You gotta yeah. chill. Yes, but all right, bro. last one for me. Last one for me. We got two of the two of some dominant SMGs in their own rights. We're gonna take who you taking? TJ Halley or Kismet? <laughs> um, I'm gonna take 
Man, this is tough. I'm gonna have to take TJ's my boy. Okay. 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 Is there, but but remember, like this is Call of Duty. Why are you taking yeah. TJ over kids? Like I feel like you? I feel like I feel like uh, kids is really good, but I feel like TJ is just better S and D. Yeah. yeah. Like oh I well like well. I don't know. Kids is kind of a dog in search too. Yeah, he is too, bro. I can teach that there. A, yeah, TJ. I feel like TJ has been a good S and D player. He always has been. He's always yeah. been a good S and D player. Yeah, know? that's just that's his history. All right, all right. All right. My my turn. All right, we got four more. Right. Temp prime temp or prime killer. Uh, I'll get prime prime done. I, I didn't really I didn't really get to watch prime killer to be honest. Prime I'm killer. Yeah, I'm, taking prime I'm taking prime sloss. I'm taking prime sloss. I'm taking prime sloss. Prime sloss. I love sloss. my guy Don, but prime sloss was. Dude, really? Yeah, he I, was, I mean, I they had a three P. Prime Sloss had a three P in the world championship. Mm -hmm. He was godlike. Yeah, really? He was bald when he was winning yeah. championships, bro. Like, oh wow. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe them. Maybe killer it is. And I've never been the same player. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Prime Hydra, bro. I guess Whoa. now or Prime Shotzi now. Damn, that's tough. Damn. <laughs> I'd have to say Prime it, Shotzi, just simply because Ants won. Ants won the uh, champs. You know, he's Ants always been. You know, at that at that top level, at, yeah. a, at a consistent time. So I definitely take Ant just just simply because of his results. You know. Okay, here's the hardest one. Well, maybe second hardest. The last one's gonna be the hardest. <laughs> prime Abizi or Prime Scump? Oh, I'm gonna have to take Seth. Prime Seth A W. A W Seth? Yeah. That's the that only the, the only person I, I can mean. put up against him is Prime Abizi. I. Yeah, like and Prime Abizi's right now, bro. Like. Yeah. Nah, Abe 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 is gross. Abe is definitely gross. But I'm just taking I'm just taking Seth just because of his dominance. I mean, Seth was dominating for a long time. Yeah, and you can't give Abe that kind of gas right now. Yeah, nah. you still play against him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that, you know, at least comes with tide now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. right. Um, the last one, and we this might end the show instantly if this is wrong. Answer. Prime <laughs> LeBron or Prime Michael Jordan? Oh man. Oh man, that's tough. I'm gonna take MJ there. There what? we go. What? Oh, smart man. I always knew Pred was wow. a smart. You AJ was sitting there on YouTube typing in Michael Jordan highlights. All he see was the good. He wasn't even born when he was playing. It doesn't matter, I'm just, bro. I'm just taking six out of six. Facts. If if if, Le, if LeBron if LeBron wins another another ring at age 38, there's an argument I, maybe. Then I think I think then I think he takes it. I'll be honest. He takes it. Yeah, I mean, bro, bro Jordan at thirty five was playing the Wizards and he was doing nothing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but Jordan was also fun. drinking Bud Lights and smoking cigars before exactly, games. Exactly, but like, yeah, that's true. But I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like that, like LeBron's been playing for so long. Like, if he wins another ring, the only thing that stops him is just like all the all the like the, the championships he lost. I mean, he lost to a Mavericks team. Yeah, I had no one. Like you know, what I mean, like MJ is taking that game. MJ is taking that series in his prime. Sure. You know, what I'm saying like, by himself, respectfully, like to LeBron. Like MJ is loading in against the Mavs, and he's he's taking that series at his prime. Oh, for sure, he was div. I'm he's so glad you. I'm so glad you just spit facts. Or Jay's that's like right that now. series. That oh, series. Shit. If LeBron wins that series, then for me, then then it changes. But like he lost that series where I know MJ is taking. Yeah, and Le one of LeBron's wins in the bubble, like. There's just some things that like, you know, hold him back from being being the GOAT. Yeah, I love that Pred gave that answer. We got NSM episode. NSM episode. I'm thinking right, before break. we dwell on it, I know there's a game going on right now. We all get to go watch LeBron. Um, yep. I appreciate you, Pred. I'm glad I, I got to chat with you, man. We've never had an extended combo. Um, nah, looking forward it, man, to looking forward to getting to hang out one of these events. Hopefully you guys find sure. uh, some success going forward and uh watch your career unfold to this point has been unbelievable. And I'm sure it's gonna be it's gonna be even better going forward. Um, any closing thoughts from you, Jay? Yeah, nah, AJ, I just want to say thank you for coming on to the show, bro. You know you're my guy, bro. Keep rolling Appreciate with it, that man. confidence, you know. Even though your team tells you to be humble in the situation, it's good to pound in your chest all the time. <laughs> that guy, bro. So just keep doing you. I wish you nuts and success for the rest of the year, and appreciate you, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Have a good day, man. Appreciate you guys. No problem. And to everybody Thanks watching, everybody. make sure you leave a like and leave five-star review on the podcast networks. Until next time, guys, we'll see you in the next episode. Peace. Peace.